The Bergisches Land in Western Germany is made for dams. With 21 of them, it holds the record in Europe and offers many animals a new, diverse home. Others have to deal with unusual problems. Change is part of the concept, in the dam itself, as well as for the dammed river. A great challenge for all creatures that live here. The Bergisches Land is located on the right bank of the Rhine and includes three counties, the city of Leverkusen and the remscheid zolingen wuppertal city triangle. Its longest river is the Wupper. The clouds come from the Atlantic and unload their wet carriage on the slopes of the Bergisches Land. Nowhere else in Germany does it rain as much as here. The rain provides a great abundance of water. Around 2,000 streams and rivers run through the country. Above all, the Wupper. Originating in a myth and shrouded nook in the Oberberg region, it is called the Wipper for its first 15 kilometers. At the start, it can develop freely. The Dipper, therefore, still finds plenty of larvae to feed its hungry brood. The grass snake likes to hunt in and around clear streams and is an excellent swimmer. It is no danger to humans, but it is a danger to bird chicks. Already on the tributaries of the Wipper are the first dams in the Wupper drainage basin, the Brucher and the Lingesee Talsperre. The reservoir on the Lingesee River, built in 1899, is one of the oldest in the Bergisch region. Its size at full damming, 66 soccer pitches. More than 130 years ago, people began to build dams, primarily for flood protection and as drinking water reservoirs. In the meantime, their area covers about 2% of the Bergisches land. Today, they are paradises for many waterfowl. Those who breed at dams, however, must take care to lay the nest in such a way that it cannot be destroyed by the changing water levels, because this happens from time to time. White swans bond for life. They build their nest together, after which mainly the female incubates the eggs. Cormorants don't mind water fluctuations. They fish at depth and breed at height. Where the tributary enters the lake, the water level remains relatively stable and more aquatic plants can persist. That's good for the pike, which likes to lay its spawn there. The predatory fish can reproduce well independently in reservoirs. The adaptable Eurasian coot is almost ubiquitous in reservoirs. However, the pike does not only hunt fish. Its neighbor doesn't notice the danger. It will take some time until her young hatch Thank you. 
With the water of the Lingersee, the whipper continues to grow in width. In April 2017, a completely different dam master suddenly appeared here. No one had seen it for around 130 years. With its scaly tail, church fathers had once simply declared it a fish, making it a fasting food. In addition, it wears a particularly dense fur. Another reason why it was hunted, until beavers finally disappeared completely in the Bergisha region. The largest rodent in Germany is a pure vegetarian. Young beech leaves taste particularly good. But to get them, the beaver has to try hard sometimes. Where one beaver appears, the second is usually not far away. Beaver pairs stay together for life. Beavers almost always deposit their droppings in water. This applies to small business as well as big business. Because the entrance to its lodge should always be underwater, the beaver sometimes dams up bodies of water. However, it almost never builds its lodge at dams because it's not the beaver that regulates the water level there. Underneath Wipperfurt, the Neue flows into the river that has since been renamed from Wipper to Wupper. For over 100 years, the Nye Dam, the size of 95 soccer pitches, supplied the city of Remscheid with drinking water. In the meantime, it only serves to regulate the water. Most pairs of swans now have offspring. The mother does not feed her young, but shows them how it works. But before they can fish such large morsels from the depths, some time will pass. When the water level is low, wading birds find plenty of food in the silt. And the grey heron also finds plenty of food when the fish have to move closer together. Its nest is well filled and the hungry gang with the mohawk hairdo is constantly expecting supplies. Grey herons have now conquered almost all the country's reservoirs. For them, they are simply well-filled pantries. And there is something else that makes the Naya Dam attractive for the herons. It is surrounded by forest, ideal for a bird that breeds in large colonies and trees. There is enough space for all of them. Grey herons are among the most common fish hunters on the lake. Due to the dams, the water level of the Wupper usually remains quite constant, apart from extreme weather conditions. This indirectly benefits the beaver family. At four weeks, the young leave the burrow for the first time, but still cling closely to their mother. The little ones can swim right from the start, but they first have to learn to dive. And like almost everything, the best way to do that is by imitating.
Later, they will be able to stay underwater for up to 15 minutes. The same applies to feeding, like the old, like the young. The changeover to plant food is a critical time because the appropriate intestinal flora must first develop. Some young animals do not make the transition and die. The beaver probably once gave its name to the bever and its dam. Size at full dam, 280 soccer pitches, an ideal sailing area. There is a lot to discover in the lake, which was dammed for the first time in 1898. The dam was no longer sufficient to supply the factories along the Vupa River as early as the 1930s. The old wall was simply flooded and later blown up. Here, there is a water depth of almost 30 meters. It is cold, dark and dull the ideal terrain for the light shy eel. Eels usually travel thousands of kilometers to the Sargasso Sea to spawn. But this eel will not make it. Its journey already ends at the new dam. Placed by a diver at some point, a statue of Jesus watches over the underwater world. Sometimes strange bones are found at the bottom. It is the indigestible leftovers in the remains of this fish, a catfish. The twilight and night hunter usually spends the day in rock crevices. And this fish has to hide particularly well. Its conspecifics are usually green-gray. Only rarely do white and thus more conspicuous specimens appear. It uses tactile projections on its mouth, the barbels, which also have olfactory and gustatory receptors to track down its prey. The white catfish is less well camouflaged than its grey congeners. However, Europe's largest freshwater fish has hardly any natural enemies, apart from anglers with whom it is also very popular at the Bevertalsberg. Catfish are omnivores. The bird bones and the feces show that not only fish have to be wary of them. Time-lapse footage reveals that there is quite a bit of commotion at the bottom of the dam. Great pond snails the largest aquatic lunged snails in Europe searched the ground for edibles. The snails feed mainly on algae and larger aquatic plants, which they graze with their rasping tongue. They also absorb oxygen through the skin, but need to go to the water surface to breathe from time to time. The river mussel, on the other hand, has gills. Unlike it, the basket shell is one of the introduced species and originates from Southeast Asia. 
The creatures of slowness seem to be protected from almost all dangers so deep at the bottom. But the impression is deceptive. In particularly dry times, such as the summer of 2020, the beaver shrinks to a small stream. During prolonged drought, which is becoming increasingly frequent even in the rain-fed Bergisches Land, more water has to be released to the Wupper via the beaver to compensate for levels, and significantly more water evaporates, even without any artificial regulation. Ducks and geese may initially benefit from this. They now find plenty of stranded mussels and snails. But for these, even without hungry beaks, there is no chance of survival. Sometimes the water gives a view of victims of misfortune. The fox examines what is still to be enjoyed from the deer carcass. The nursing mother must not be picky at this time because she needs a lot of energy. She has a whole den full of young to care for. The large litter may be an indication that there are many mice. This is because the adapters adjust the number of their young accordingly. The six weeks old puppies are already curious about everything that moves. Quite big, better retreat. Quite small, but you never know. The reservoirs of its tributaries only indirectly influence the Wupper on the first 75 kilometers of the river. But they were not sufficient to regulate the water level. And so the river itself has also been slowed down in its course for over 30 years. The size of the Wuppertal Dam at full damming, 318 soccer pitches. The morning idyll belies the fact that the dam has completely changed the character of the river. One of the big winners of this change is the cormorant. It breeds high in the trees, so fluctuating water levels don't bother it much. This pair is still building its nest. The material transfer is part of the courtship. Next door, family planning is taken care of. Cormorant numbers have increased significantly in Germany's North Rhine-Westphalia in recent decades, with the Bergische dams also contributing. Some neighbors are almost done. The parents care for the young birds together and feed them food from the crop, an enlargement of the esophagus. One floor up, they are already training for takeoff. In times of drought, the cormorant's hunting ground shrinks even in the large Wuppertal reservoir. Even in the early summer of 2020, large regions of the Bergisches Land were among the driest in all of Germany. 
a rare sight because the kingfisher can't find a suitable perch on the bare banks. However, there is enough to hunt. The undemanding perch in particular populate the reservoir. In the late 1970s, entire villages had to be abandoned for the construction of the dams, and about 750 people lost their homes. A special attraction for divers is the sunken bridge near the village of Krewinklerbrück, the oldest Wupper bridge ever. An ideal hunting ground for the young pike perch. In Germany's waters, the largest fish of the perch family. It particularly likes to fish in the murky waters, where it sees better than many of its prey fish, thanks to a reflective pigment layer in its eye. Quite a few relics of long lost times have survived to this day. Somewhat off the bridge, a male pike perch watches over its spawn. European perch surround the spawn in the hope of a tasty morsel. It can't give up its position for long because it constantly fans the eggs with oxygenated flesh water. Its brief attacks make little impression on the thieves. But then, the stressed father gets unexpected support. The pike is not interested in the spawn, but its mere appearance puts the perch to flight. The fish use the ruins like a natural habitat and sometimes hang their spawn on an old railing. The crevices in the wall serve as a substitute for the missing water plants for the catfish to hide. Fourteen dams, and thus two-thirds in the Bergisches Land region, are operated by the Wupperverband. The Panzer Dam was built in 1893 and recently restored. Size at full dam, four and a half soccer pitches. This makes it one of the smallest. It is connected to the northwestern arm of the Wuppertal Dam by the Panzerbach stream. Egyptian geese are now a common sight at reservoirs. Originally from Africa, they spread rapidly along the Rhine into Central Europe, starting from escaped park birds in the Netherlands. The shy black stork is much rarer. Although it breeds in the forest, it likes to fish at the lakes. Since the riparian areas at the drinking water barrier are fenced, it apparently feels safe. Rain makes the riparian vegetation sprout and more is already on the way. Just a roebuck. But the fawns don't like the fact that the guy is running after the mother. A little comfort feels good. Extreme weather conditions are also becoming more frequent in the Bergisches Land region. Where there was dry weather, Heavy rainfall, as in July 2021, is turning rivers like the Dun into raging torrents. Trees lose their grip. And the beaver family lose their home. And not only them, 
more than a million cubic meters of water flow into the Vupa Reservoir. But it is just about possible to discharge the masses in a controlled manner. Despite this, so much still arrives in Wuppertal that the water level rises to over 3 meters 50, higher than ever before. The Moorbach below Leichlingen has also developed into a white water. Private photos of the small Diepenthal Dam show the consequences. Although the operators lowered the water level in time, a flood wave causes quite a lot of damage. After 24 hours, the heavy rain is gone. But the destruction remains, here as in many areas of the country. The 120-year-old dam has held, but further upstream, that of an angler's pond broke. The water masses were too much for the drainage channel. They tore away half the farm and left mud and garbage. Images representative of much worse damage and fates. Over 180 people died in Germany. Countless lost all their belongings. Without dams, more might have happened in the Bergisch region too. Although there was clear criticism that the major operators had not released enough water in time. A dilemma, because the year before, there was only dry mud here, which, from the operator's point of view, argues for holding more water in summer. The hunting ground of the pike has in any case increased drastically. Between the flooded trees, the ambush hunter can hide even better. In some places, the Wupper lives up to its name as the Amazon of the Bergisches Land. It's hard to believe that just a few decades ago, it was one of the dirtiest rivers in Germany. Fish, such as salmon and sea trout, were completely extinct. But since 1993, they have been reintroduced as part of a migratory fish program. Committed volunteers regularly check how far the released fish, in this case juvenile salmon, have grown in the meantime. Experience has shown that some of the tiny fish will actually be seen again as adults in a few years. They breed the sea trout in a hatchery near Bayernburg. Stripping the row has long been routine for the helpers. The fish are returnees that have risen from the sea and are caught in the fall by means of electrofishing. The helpers immediately put the fish back into the Wupper after stripping them of their spawning products to minimize stress. Then it's the turn of the males and it soon becomes clear why their seed is also called fish milk. Mixing is not enough. In the following weeks, the helpers will have to sort out dead eggs every day to reduce the risk of disease. But thanks to care, fish usually hatch from over 95% of the eggs. Below the hatchery lies one of the most beautiful and smallest reservoirs in the Bergische Land, the Bayernburg Reservoir. Its size, 22 soccer pitches. However, the sea trout that hatched after 80 to 100 days are not destined for the reservoir. They end up in the Wupper, below the Wuppertal Dam, of course because there is no fish ladder there yet, with the help of which the fish could overcome it. The Bayernburgers hope that will change soon. During the day, beavers rarely show themselves outside the burrow, 
for any length of time. But the big rodent is so busy repairing its lodge that short summer nights are not enough time for it. Only one old animal shows itself in front of the camera. Did its young not survive the flood disaster? Long before the construction of the first dam, water boosted the economy in the Bergisches Land, as the Hilbertshammer on the Leyenbach, once powered by water, reminds us. An amphibian feels particularly at home on the shady, damp banks of streams. The rare fire salamander is probably a straggler of one of the most spectacular animal migrations in the Bergisches Land. In spring, amphibians migrate to small, still waters and give birth to their young underwater. Thus, they do not spawn like most other amphibians. The tadpoles spend four months cavorting in the water, breathing through their tufted gills. Only then are they ready to go ashore. Salamanders have recently become highly endangered, also in the Bergisches Land region. Their poisonous skin secretions are ineffective against a fungal disease introduced from Asia. Shortly before the Wuppa turns west towards the Rhine, the Eschbach flows into it. Its upper reaches are also dammed to form a lake. Size, just under 20 soccer pitches. Drinking water reservoirs, such as the Eschbach Dam, require clean rivers or streams. Thus, lakes rarely turn a region into an idyll. But they were created where nature is still in order. The Eschbach Dam is the oldest drinking water dam in Germany and also the oldest reservoir in North Rhine-Westphalia. It started operation as early as 1891. Dragonfly larvae can develop well in the clean lake. They spend between one to three years in the water, depending on the species. The mosaic damselfly is a hunter. It lies in wait for its prey, small crustaceans, mosquito larvae, and other small animals, and then grabs them at lightning speed. It immediately sorts out the indigestible. All dragonfly larvae have a special mantis, some smaller, some larger, a greatly elongated lower lip and usually folded in. Pike usually hunt during the day but some turn night into day sometimes. It can't be the fear of anglers, as fishing is prohibited in most drinking water reservoirs. In addition to their sharp eyes, they use their lateral line organ, sensory cells that register pressure waves. Instinctively, the small perches keep still. Thick vegetation benefits both hunters and hunted. They can hide better, and sometimes one, sometimes the other, is successful. If undergrowth vegetation is absent, as is the case in many places and reservoirs, it presents far greater challenges to fish. The small one can't find a hiding place. The big one blows its cover. Once missed, 
the whole thing starts all over again. A pike is not made for chasers. And if it then raises dust, it can only rely on the sightline organ. This forest stream develops further downstream into the largest tributary of the Vupa, the Dun. It too has been dammed for almost 50 years. Size of the reservoir today, 660 soccer pitches. It is the only one in the region with a thermal regulation system. It ensures that the water is not just let into the dun directly at the bottom, as is usually the case, because then it's barely warmer than six degrees, too cold for many fish. Large dams usually have pre-dams to hold back impurities. Since water fluctuations are minimal here, birds are particularly happy to settle here. Some 80 species of breeding birds are set to be here. The white swan, of course, has also long been a native, as on almost all dams. It lives primarily on aquatic plants, which can flourish abundantly in the forebay. This inhabitant, on the other hand, does not really fit the mold, an Atlantic sturgeon. It happens again and again that non-local fish are released. For the pike, on the other hand, the plant jungle is well suited for laying its spawn. Sturgeons, like salmon, migrate to spawn from the sea to the rivers where they have hatched. However, the exposed fish will never be able to follow its drive again. Already at the next dam, it is over. However, the pike also has a dam-made problem. The temperature at the bottom of deep lakes is often only four to six degrees centigrade, but it needs a water temperature of around 15 degrees to really get into spawning mood. This may explain why the pike courts the sturgeon's favor so persistently. It is very late. Most females have long since laid their spawn. In its distress, it now tries its luck with a complete stranger. Two companions of fate united without any chance of success. Thanks to the modern thermal plant, the situation has improved, at least for temperature-sensitive fish below the dam. In autumn, the dams, like the Wieltalsperre, show their most beautiful sides. It is not only in terms of color that they now change their face. The operators then release more water to be prepared for possible winter floods. At the Nayatal Dam, as in many places, the forest is partially left to its own devices. Decaying wood provides a good breeding ground for fungi. It is getting a lot quieter at the much frequented reservoir. All dead trees that still exist here are essential for the survival of many animals. The Nasusius pipistral bat is particularly fond of settling near bodies of water. It spends the day in tree hollows only in the late evening, it leaves to hunt on the shore of the lake. Soon, it will start its hibernation.
At the beaver lodge, there is a joyful surprise. A cub shows itself with its mother in front of the camera. And only a little away, a second one. So at least they have survived the flood disaster. Perhaps the young ones will soon be doing their own flood control too. When beavers dam up streams, the water spreads out and flows away much more slowly. Most aquatic plants perform photosynthesis in a similar way to those on land. When the days get shorter and less light falls into the water, quite a few of them therefore also break down the green pigment. The weasel has already exchanged its brown summer fur for the winter fur. An excellent camouflage in the snow, but snow always comes later or not at all, even in the Bergische Land. A problem for the small marten. No movement escapes the kestrel, and it is fast and agile. Its hoped for prey, however, is as quick as a fox. For dams, change is part of the program. In times of climate crisis, this change is becoming increasingly extreme. And yet, they are more important than ever. And not just for us humans. Far more than drinking water tanks and water retention basins, they have become home to many animals, for some now indispensable. This is particularly evident during the cold seasons. Many bodies of water freeze over completely. This means no food for waterfowl and less oxygen for fish. In reservoirs, on the other hand, large areas remain free because of the water fluctuations. Dams completely change a river, and not everyone can cope with that. But in the meantime, they have become very popular with many beings, with us humans, as well as with quite a few animals. Uniting water management, tourism and ecological demands, as well as possible, is a worthwhile goal. After all, its dams are among the most valuable treasures the Bergisches Land has to offer.